Hey, welcome to COVID Kitchen with Sean. Got a text from my buddy Tyler yesterday saying that his kids are really sick of the eight meals he knows how to cook and he needs a, a COVID Kitchen with Sean vlog. So I got my executive producer Skylar behind the camera there and uh, we're gonna show you how to cook some stuff. All right, so I asked him for uh, one word of inspiration and he said broil. So that's just direct high heat, intense. It can be out on your gas grill, over some charcoal, uh, under that broiler in the oven. Um, just hot, direct flame is considered broil. And I had some thin steaks. I was gonna do some carne asada. And so that's what we're gonna do. Um, for carne asada, I recommend any meat that's nice and thin. Um, we have some really thin ribeyes. I'm always gonna say you should uh, go check out Buckner Family Ranch. You can find them on Facebook. You can find their website get meat from them, especially right now during this COVID season, support this awesome family. So that's Buckner Family Ranch. So thinly sliced ribeyes. Another thing you need to know to cook with me on 90% of my uh, recipes are these four things. Lowry's garlic salt, black pepper, lots of chili powder, and lots of cumin. So uh, those that have got recipes from me before know, like just stock those four things in your cupboard and we can cook everything together. We're also gonna make uh, grilled corn and avocado salsa, and we're gonna make a really simple Spanish rice, and then the refried beans that uh, my family grew up making when I was a kid that I still love to this day. So check out the bowl of salsa ingredients here. Uh, one thing that's missing is our avocados. I'll throw in some life hacks when you get them in. If your avocados are really hard, like they all are right now, uh, bananas, let off like an ethylene gas or something that helps ripen things. So um, and they also say just brown paper bags help ripen. So I threw them in a paper bag with some bananas and I just did that a couple hours ago. I can already feel they're a bit softer. So um, that's one life hack. Anytime seasoning uh, meat, I recommend at least an hour ahead of time. You could do this the day before, kind of the longer it sits, up to a couple days. You don't want it to, the salt will start to break down after that. But. Um, Hour ahead of time minimum really helps the flavors kind of combine with the meat. Also the salt kind of draws out some of that juice and it caramelizes really well. So again, I'm not gonna tell you measurements on seasonings. Make it delicious. Tyler, if I go to do this, you're gonna hear me say make it delicious a lot. I'm not pulling out teaspoons for you. Press it in a little bit. Grab a little bit of oil just to keep it from sticking to the grill. This is just canola oil. Um, I save olive oil for things that you're actually gonna taste the olive oil in. Um, canola oil is good, healthy oil too. It got a bad rap when it first came out, but they don't make it like that anymore. Um, and you're not gonna taste the olive oil when you're char grilling something. If you're cooking with small kids that are really sensitive to spice, you could completely omit. Honestly, the black pepper is spicier than the chili powder, so I would omit the pepper and just use a little chili powder for some flavor. Anytime you're gonna grill anything, preheat your grill. Crank it to high, give it at least five minutes. If you got a little dial, I let it get up to five or 600. Make sure it's a clean, hot, preheated grill. All right, we're gonna grill the corn and the scallions for this salsa. So first, come down here. Cut off these little hairs before you grill anything. Nobody likes little hairs in their mouth. Again, a little bit of oil. And those same, a little garlic salt. A little bit of cumin. I love the flavor of charred scallions that it just gives everything. Sometimes I char scallions really hard and then whip them into mashed potatoes. I put them in like cream sauces. I love charred scallion flavor. Chili powder, a little black pepper. Again, if you're worried about spice at all, just leave the black pepper out. All right, grill is, mine's showing 600 degrees. Clean, hot, smoking. Just get a little bit of black on each side and it'll be good to go. 
All right, this is a pretty good char on the scallions. Let the corn go a little bit longer. All right, so what I'm doing for the salsa is uh, eight of these Roma tomatoes, one big bunch of cilantro, two limes, two corn, that's like 12 to 15 scallions, I love scallions, uh, and two big avocado. For your family, probably cut it in half, but for my family of six, this won't have leftovers. This is how I cut off the little stem piece. Just put your thumb next to the tip of your knife, jam it in, spin it around. All right, now for the juice of the limes. You know you have a good lime when it's nice and shiny. I have one good lime and one lime that Joe Hendricks left here that's not as good. All right, again, I'm doing one whole bunch of cilantro for my big old family. I'm pulling this down to uh, halfway through the stems. We eat the stems of cilantro. They're tender, they're not really woody like rosemary or parsley or thyme, uh, and they taste like cilantro. So just roll it up super tight like this. Anytime you're cutting a leafy green herb or vegetables, the tighter you get, the nicer you're gonna be able to make your cuts. Make your chiffonade, there's your French word of the day, chiffonade, to cut fine strips of something, uh, cut fine strips of something uh, leafy and green. I guess it's gonna be green, no matter what color it is, it's purple. Voila, maybe go through it a little bit more here. I don't want to turn it into mush. And I'm going to save a little bit of this for my rice later. Maybe even the meat, the tacos. So I'm going to put about two thirds of it in the salsa. I'm going to save some of it for something else. We love cilantro. All right, this corn's looking good. I like a little bit of black on there. Beautiful. And right, now we're gonna cut up all these scallions and throw them in there. Another tip for you, because it drives me crazy when people scrape off with the edge of the knife. Don't do that to your knife. Use the back if you're gonna use your knife. All right, now the carn. Don't worry about cutting in too deep. You're not gonna cut off the What's that called? Cob? You're not gonna cut the cob, don't worry about it. Boil these, make a corn stock, delicious, easy corn soup. All right, let's see how the uh, brown paper bag worked with the avocado. It feels a bit softer. It's been four hours now. It's good, it's good avocado, it was really hard. All right, I'm gonna mix all this up. Uh, I'm sure I'll need to add a little bit of garlic salt, maybe a little bit of pepper, kind of season it to taste, but because we already put all the spices on all the veggies before we grill them. Another thing I do a lot of times is grill off a bell pepper or two and throw it in here, but we're going with what we have. All right, and we taste it. Kind of spot on. Maybe a tiny more garlic salt. Always taste your food, season to taste. Sabe muy bueno, muy bueno. All right, simple Spanish rice. Um, oil, it's gonna be like a tablespoon. Again, you can use olive oil if you'd like. I'm gonna use canola, because I love it. Uh, one cup of rice, I've got like an extra long grain, because I love that. Medium's fine, don't use short grain. Um, this is one and a half cups of a chicken stock or a low sodium chicken broth or water. Water is totally fine too, do that. We'll do half teaspoon chili powder, half teaspoon of cumin, 
We'll do a full tablespoon of kosher salt. So if you're not using a coarse ground kosher salt, like that's all I use to cook with, um, you're gonna need to use like a half a tablespoon of regular salt, I don't know. I know it's saltier, I don't cook with it. I can't tell you how to cook with it. I'm gonna do one whole onion, um, minced up finely, and crushed garlic, and ain't no shame in the tube of crushed garlic game, because garlic cloves are sticky and nasty, and I had to use them for a long time, and I'm over it, and I like this stuff now. Another life hack, what we do in restaurants, we cut it like this, and then you can kind of spin it, take your extra piece, wrap it around, Boom, got your little rice. All right, put the rice in and we're gonna just cook the rice and that was probably a half tablespoon of oil and we're just gonna cook the rice until it's a light brown. All right, get in there closer, see the brown. So I've been stirring it pretty consistently to get a nice little brown on it. And we add the onion. And if your family doesn't like onion, these are so cooked into the rice, they won't know they're there. Got a tablespoon of the uh, crushed garlic. All right, I've let this saute for about four, maybe even five minutes on high. We've been on high heat. We preheated the pan just the same way we preheated the grill. So these onions are nice and soft now. I pour in the one and a half cup chicken broth. It immediately boils rapidly. So I'm gonna turn it to all the way to low heat. As low as it'll go. As low as it'll go, put a lid on it. Set a 15 minute timer. And when that timer goes off, Reset it, just move this off the heat, but keep the lid on it and leave it for another 15 minutes. So 30 minutes total. Another little thing I do, I am not about that little steam hole. So I'm gonna shove a few toothpicks in there. So it's a nice tight cover, 15 minutes. Okay, time to grill the steak, the carne asada. Uh, you need five things. Hot, I'm almost back up to 600 again on my grill. Hot, clean grill, tongs, your marinated meat, a non-raw meat pan. I'm just gonna use the one that had the veggies on it. Cold beer. All right, super simple refried beans. Again, I'm gonna go with like, I don't know what that is. What is that? A tablespoon of oil? Half a tablespoon? Call that a tablespoon of oil. Preferably canola. I strained off, uh, I don't know, as much liquid as I could from these canned frijoles. You, you drop the can in first. This is two cans. Again, this is Gaster family. Don't forget to drop the can. It's an important part. All right. A little bit of garlic salt, again, just to taste. Canned beans are kind of salty, so be careful. And I like a lot of pepper. Your family might not like a lot of pepper. All right, we let these simmer for at least five minutes, get nice and hot and uh, soft. Smash them up. Use a bean masher or a whisk. Bean masher, potato masher, bottom of a wine bottle, whatever you got.
All right, so these are delicious and vegan as is. My family always added a little bit of uh, Monterey Jack to it. I've got a little bit of white cheddar here. We'll whisk in a little bit of that. Also, save your juice in case they're thicker than you want. You can thin them out with some of the bean juice. <laughs> 